This is video 451, and the goal of this video is to understand how to find the period, amplitude, and starting point of sine and cosine waves. So first of all, our parent functions. The parent functions, sine and cosine, um, we'll be using a lot... Okay, number one, you have to know what the parent function look like, looks like. And we've talked about it in class already, but it's essential that you understand what the parent function looks like. And if you have that memorized, you'll be much better able to graph the transformations, which we'll talk about more at the end of the week. So please make sure that you know what the parent functions look like. So here's your notes on it. You should be adding this to your note sheet. So first of all, the starting point for sine is at 0, 0, because if the angle is 0, the sine of the angle is also 0. Think about your noodle graphs or think about your unit circle to help you visualize that. The second thing that we should know is that sine, the period of sine is 2 pi. And that's because it will repeat every 2 pi every time we go around the full circle. Sine repeats. So that will mean that those points 0 and 2 pi will be at the same level. So that we can just basically copy and paste the graph that we're going to create between 0 and 2 pi and then just to duplicate and make the graph larger. So the next thing that we should know is that the amplitude, and remember that's the peak in the valley, so to speak, of this wave, the amplitude of that wave is 1. And again, that's because the, 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 the value um, on the unit circle, remember the maximum is 1 and negative 1 on the unit circle. So again, the parent function, therefore, will go from 1 to negative 1. And so that will be my amplitude is 1 because it varies 1 in either direction. Now, the second thing we need to memorize on top of those three things is that the sine curve is this wave that goes up and then comes back down. That's the parent function and what it looks like. And so since I know the starting point, the amplitude, and the period, and I know that the sine wave is, is symmetrical, it will simply, in the middle, be at zero again. And then it's going to have a peak and a valley is the way I like to think of it. It's going to have a maximum up at one right in the middle of zero and pi and a minimum down at negative 1 in the middle of pi and 2 pi. That's essentially because you are plugging in, you're plugging in pi over 2 in for sine. For instance, for this point up here, you're plugging in pi over 2, and when you do that, you get 1, because the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And, the op and down here, we'd plug in 3 pi over 2, and we'd get the sine of 3 pi over 2, which is negative 1. Again, the unit circle. Think of the unit circle. What is the sine of 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2? It's negative 1 on the axis. So now we'll just connect my graphs with a nice smooth curve. And I'm done with one period of the sine curve. But again, like I said, we can copy and paste this. So I can copy and paste this to the left and the right to see the repetitive nature of the sine curve. So that's sine. Now cosine. Cosine, if we remember the parent function again, you're going to have a better time graphing all the transformations. So the first thing we need to remember is that cosine starts at the maximum. So cosine starts up at 0, 1. And again, that's because if I plug in 0 degrees, the cosine of 0 degrees is 1, because cosine is the x value on the unit circle. So if we know our definitions and we know our basic values, we can graph these much more efficiently. The second thing that we need to remember is that cosine also has a period of 2 pi, because it will repeat every 2 pi. So from 0, 1, it's going to have the same exact level points. That's why I graph 2 pi, comma 1, because it's going to repeat itself and continue the curve. And the next thing is the amplitude is also 1. So notice those similarities between sine and cosine. Amplitude is also 1. And in order to graph this at this point, I need to remember what the cosine graph looks like. It has this U shape. That's the parent function. That's one period. It starts high, ends high. It valleys out. It has a mat minimum in the middle. So that's why at pi, I'm going to be at the minimum of negative 1. Now I'm going to graph the points in between. The points in between are directly in the middle, so it's almost like I could create a straight line. I could create a straight line here just to connect these. Of course, it does not connect with a straight line. We are not graphing this zigzag. We're graphing a curve. So we'll connect it with a nice curved figure. Now we're going to repeat that graph on the left-hand side, doing the exact same thing like we did with sine, and we can see a complete graph of cosine, two periods worth. So don't forget, 
the key values of the parent functions, where they start, their period, and their amplitude, and their general shape. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is start to look at graphs, and we're going to find those key important values that you're much better able to find them and use them to graph in the future. So we're going to start with looking at examples of sign only. So these graphs are sign, and we want to find the starting point, the period, and the amplitude for all three. So we're going to start with the black one. The black one, it starts at 0, 0, because I find one period of sign, I know the general value, the general sign goes up and then comes down and comes back up, and so I trace that to help me see it, and then I see that the starting point is at zero, zero. The next thing I'm looking for is period. Well, the period is how long does it take to do one cycle, and it took two pi to do one cycle because it ended at two pi and started at zero, and then the amplitude, how high up and down does the graph go, and that is one. Now, of course, hopefully you notice that that is the same as your um, parent function of sine. That is the parent function, the black line, the black curve. Now let's take a look at green. So green, the green value, that's the curve. That's one period that I've traced there. So now let's take a look at what the starting value is. Looks like it starts at 0, 0 again. The period, so how long does it take to do one full cycle? Well, it takes 2 pi because it goes from 0 to 2 pi. So, so far, everything's the same as the black line, but what's the difference? The amplitude. The amplitude in this case is 2 because it goes up 2 from that center line and down 2. So, the amplitude is 2. Next one, the red one. So, let's erase what we have here and look at the red curve. I found one period of the red curve, and I'm going to find the starting point. Again, it starts at 0, 0, the same as the black and green. But the period is shorter. It ends after 1 pi. And the amplitude is 1 again, just like the black one. Now, one thing you might have noticed about the red one is that you can see two periods on this graph. We could look at this other period right here in pink. Now, that is also one period of a sine wave, but the starting value is now at pi comma 0. Notice the period, though, of course, is the same as is the amplitude because it's the same graph. Basically, we just looked at the second section. Both of those blue and pink answers for this problem would be correct because they both give me the right information. Typically, we'll find the starting point that's nearest 0, 0, um, and we'll talk about why in the long run, but sometimes with the real-life applications, we want to start at pi, or we want to start at 50 days, or depending on the situation, we don't always want to start at 0. So the starting value is whatever you see wherever the curve starts and it can vary from time to time. Now let's take a look at some more examples here. So let's take a look at the blue curve. It starts with finding a complete cycle, so tracing one. So here's a complete cycle of a sine curve in the blue wave. My starting point is at 0, 0. My period, it looks like it completes the cycle after two units. And then my amplitude, look how far up and down the amplitude is. The amplitude is 3. So I'm starting at, you know, I go from 0 up to 3 in order to hit that maximum, or down to 3. You can look at both ways. So now let's take a look at the black curve. I found one period. The full complete period there, it starts at 1, negative 3. The period is, let's see, the period is 2 again, but the amplitude is only 1 because it goes up 1 from the midline. So key things here, the midline is what you're looking for for the amplitude, so the amplitude, as much as we want, we have to find that midline, okay, no matter where it occurs, there's the midline of the blue one in order to find the amplitude. A couple of other ideas is you could also find, okay, from maximum to minimum, how far total is 2. We'll, we'll cut that in half is 1. So that's another way to find the amplitude. Now, some of you may have noticed that I used um, the sine curve that I used was the one that was starting here. But you could have used a sine curve that started here and ended there. And, of course, you'd still have the same period and amplitude, but now your starting point would be negative 1, negative 3. So 
there will be many options for starting points, but period and amplitude should stay consistent. Notice that these two graphs have the same period. They complete in the same cycles. They have one thing in common. Otherwise, they have different starting points and most definitely different amplitudes, as you can see by the blue graph being so tall. So here's your first question for your checkpoint. Multiple choice question. These two curves have the same what? What do they have that's the same? Do they have the same amplitude, period, starting point, or both A and B? Be sure to explain how you know and what you calculated in order to find that. There is more to this video, so make sure you continue watching. Here's your next example. So now we're finding the values for A, a sine curve, and a cosine curve. So now we're going to take it a step further. So we've been working only with sine right now, so this first part will be easy, but the cosine will be the new part. So we're going to be looking at full cosine waves as well, because we could also consider these as cosine waves, and you'll see why in just a second. So first we start with sine. We're looking at the black one, so I have to find a starting point. This looks like a good starting point because it would end at the other point to make a full, complete sine wave. So now I'm going to find the values. The starting point is at 1, 1. The period is 4 because it goes from 1 to 5 to continue finish a cycle, which is 4 units wide. And then the amplitude is 1 because it went up 1 from the midline. Okay. Again, make sure you look at the midline and not the total tight of the wave, but from the middle. Now the cosine curve. So here's where this is different. So I'm going to erase what I've done, and I'm going to look for a cosine curve. What I have to remember about cosine is that it starts high and it ends high. So it starts... So because cosine, we remember the parent graph, starts high and ends high, I find the maximum point. So sometimes cosine might be easier instead of sine for that reason. Now the maximum, and then I go one full period to the next maximum. So my starting point is going to be at 2, 2. And my period is 4, because it goes from 2 to 6 to finish a full cycle, which is 4 units. Now my amplitude is, remember it's from the midline, and this is where cosine is a little bit harder. It's from the midline, and the midline tells me that the period is 1. And I can see that at any part of the curve. Midline to the maximum, midline to the minimum, all those are a distance of 1. Now remember, you could go from max to minimum and see that goes 2 total. So we're talking from here all the way down to the minimum. It's a two distance of 2, cut that in half, is 1. So again, maximum to minimum divided by 2 is another way to find the amplitude. The next point, the next thing I have to find um, so one thing I want to notice before we move on from this problem is that the period and amplitude for sine and cosine are identical. So that's something we noticed early on when we looked at the parent functions. It will be true when we're looking at one curve and we're trying to find these values for both sine and cosine waves. And we see that they're identical. They should be identical. So really, if you can see the answer for sine, that's the same answer for cosine when we're talking period and amplitude. But their starting point will always be different because sine starts in the middle, cosine starts high at the maximum. So they're always going to have different starting points when we're using the same curve to find these values. Now let's take a look at the blue. The blue curve. So we find one wave of sine, we find the starting point, 0, 0. We find the period of 2. I'm kind of going quick here because it should be getting easier. Feel free to pause the video and try and find these on your own, and then, you know, fast forward the video and see if you got it right. And then, of course, the amplitude, let's see, it goes up 2. So both period and amplitude are 2 here. Now we look at cosine. So we find a period of cosine which starts high and ends high. And so my starting point is at 0.5, comma 2, 1 half, because it's over 1 half and up to 2. A full period, it should be the same. Let's make sure. Um, a period of 2, in fact, it is 2 because it goes from 0.5 to 2.5. And then the amplitude is also 2. So it confirms again that the period and amplitude will be the same when we're talking about the same curves, but the starting points will have a different value. And we'll talk more about how to find the different starting points on the same curve without even maybe using the graph in the long run here. So these are your examples for your values today. So for this next question, I want you to kind of start and incorporate cosine. So find a potential starting point for a sine wave and a cosine wave for the following curve. So do your best to find those two values, explain how you found them, and bring your questions into class so we can go over them.
Good luck, and we'll see you in class.